morning everybody and thanks for watching so I have included my Substack article in the link here if you're watching this on YouTube uh, but wanted to talk a little bit about why Jesus is different than religion you know I had a comment of a guy saying that Christianity was made up and it, it wasn't I, of course, in a sense, the doctrines of Christianity are made up because they're false doctrines. The false doctrine of eternal hell, the false doctrine of the Trinity, the false doctrine of human free will, the false doctrine of the immortality of the soul, and so on and so forth. But this guy was just trolling and saying that what I was teaching was made up, but he thought I was teaching Christianity, which tells you how much he paid attention to my videos because what I teach is not Christianity, so he must not even watch the videos. He just kind of trolls and makes comments without any uh, research into it. But I've heard that statement before in comparing what I teach or what we believe as a religion and really it couldn't be further from the truth what we teach and what I talk about on this channel completely eliminates religion it's the end of religion the Apostle Paul ends religion as we know it and this is not another religion it is the end of all religion and Paul's clear on that throughout his letters and especially in Acts chapter 17 which I'm going to go over but religion if we define it is a set of beliefs man-made beliefs that must be followed based on whatever group is following them in order to get to God or in order to get to gods or in order to get to the deity or the endless bliss or nirvana or whatever it is that the end goal of that religion is. It's a system of beliefs that have to be performed by man in order to get to God. There's a must do in every single religion that has ever existed. There's something that man must do, even if it's just when we talk about Christianity. Many people say, Oh yeah, Jesus Christ died for you, but you must accept, but you must do good works, but you must have faith, but you must do this or do that. And whatever you add to that statement, if someone says to you, yes, Jesus Christ saved you, but you must, or Jesus Christ died on the cross, but you must, whatever comes after that, but you must, is religion. And it makes what Jesus Christ accomplished on the cross null and void because you take it away from him and you put it on that you must, which must be completed in order for what Jesus Christ actually did for you to mean anything. So, what Christianity has done, and Christianity is a religion, because it's a group of people, and there's thousands of denominations, but those denominations are different because the you musts are different in those denominations. But every one of them say that man must do something, and those, that something varies based on denomination, independent of God, in order to get to God. So that is a religion. So, Je so Christianity has taken Jesus Christ's accomplishment, what Jesus Christ has done, what God has done through Jesus Christ for all humanity, and they took it away from him, and they make it a religion that has to be accomplished by the human being in order to get to Jesus. And that is a horrible, horrible thing because Jesus Christ ended all religion.
Well, how do you end religion? If religion is the must-do of man, if it's a system of beliefs that people follow or have to do in order to get to God, the must-do to get to God, then for it not to be a religion, you must take away the must-do. And the creator or the deity in question has to accomplish and perform any, everything for that human being in order for them to get to God, in order for that not to be a religion. And that's exactly what Christ Jesus has done, but hardly anybody believes it. Well, Paul in Acts chapter 17, I'm not going to read it. I'm just going to paraphrase here. You guys can check it out. But Paul talks about religion. He talks about in Acts chapter 17 that God does not live in temples made by hands, he says, nor is he attended by human hands. What is religion but attending to God by human hands? It's human beings doing things in order to get to God whether it's following the law, whether it's doing good works, whether it's having faith, whether it's doing this or doing that. You, know, you can do this, but you can't do that. All the do's and don'ts, all the must-do's, all the things you have to be in order to get to God is God being attended by human hands. But Paul says God does not live in temples made by hands. God does not God is not attended by human hands and then he says as if requiring anything so Paul says God is not attended by human hands meaning he doesn't need religion which is attending God by human hands as if requiring anything so the reason God is not attended by human hands the reason God doesn't need religion the reason God doesn't have to have humans doing this must do to get to him is because he doesn't require it as if requiring it why doesn't he require it because Paul says in his next statement because he gives to all life breath and all so how can God require something from a human being when he is responsible for giving that human being being the very thing that is required. So if we have faith, God gives us the faith. If we have good works, God gives us the good works. We believe that belief is given to us. So religion, when they come up with their system of rules to try to get to God, whatever it is, whatever they do, whatever their must do is, they do independently of God that's where Christians come up with this free will choice which is nowhere in scripture and completely proven false in scripture everywhere yes every, people make choices but those choices have been planned by God long before the person was even born back when God set this plan in motion before all things So, acting independently of God is something that isn't even possible, according to scripture, but religion says that in order to get to God, you have to perform this independent act separate from God in order to get to God. But Paul says that God is not attended by human hands, not attended by religion, as if requiring anything. Why doesn't he require anything? Because God gives you everything. He gives to all life, breath, and all. What's not included in the life and breath and all that God gives to all? Nothing. So that ends religion right there because there is no independent action of the human being in order to get to God. God does it all. And if the deity does it all and is responsible for saving his creation and every little bit in between, 
then the must-do of the human being is eliminated. Therefore, religion is eliminated. Paul later says that in him, in God, we live and move and are. We have our very existence in God. In him, we live and move and are. We cannot at any point separate ourselves from God or step out of God, step out of his intention. Not at any point can we do that. So God created all. And Jesus Christ came into that creation, was tortured, died for our sin, was dead, and God resurrected him. And because of what Christ did, going into death, he has obliterated and will eventually abolish death for all of God's creation. And all of God's creation will be filled up with God. Because one day, 1 Corinthians 15, 28, God will be all in all of his creation. So Jesus Christ, by the hand of God, God, through Jesus Christ, has performed everything and has done salvation and has taken away the must-do of religion. Yeah, of course, some people have a special salvation for the ages, and they get in first, and as Romans chapter 8 says, that group works with Christ not to damn the rest of creation, but to save the rest of creation, to bring them also into the glorious freedom of being children of God. So people do have a special salvation, and in order to have that salvation, you have to be given faith. But God gives you that faith and that realization. The realization that through Jesus Christ's death for sin, his entombment, and his resurrection, that you are saved, you are made right, that all creation is made right, that Christ took the old humanity, the sin and the death, and he killed it. God killed it on the cross. And when Christ was resurrected, Christ was resurrected without that old humanity, without that sin, without that death. So now we have participated in Jesus' death. We were dead, and now we're resurrected. Now we're just waiting for that deliverance of our bodies in order to realize this. And this deliverance will occur for everyone because of God's work through Christ. See, it is accomplished. The end goal is God being all in all of his creation. The end goal is all, as Colossians chapter 1, verse 20 says, that all creation will be reconciled to God through the blood of the cross. Romans 5, 18 and 19. Through one man came condemnation. Adam, through one man comes justification. Christ, we didn't do anything to get death. We inherited it from Adam. We can't do anything to get Jesus Christ's life. We inherit it from Christ based on what he did. He entered death. He reversed the curse. Not our must-dos. We didn't must-do anything to be born into death. So we don't do any of these must-dos to be born into Christ's life. 1 Corinthians 15, 21 to 22, the same all that are dying in Adam are the exact same all that are vivified, made alive, beyond the reach of death by Christ. First Timothy 2.10, is that supposed to be First Timothy 4.10, I wonder? I'm, I'm going to check why I put 1 Timothy 2.10 here. There's something else I wanted to say. 1 Timothy 2.10. Yeah, no, I don't want to talk about that. That's uh, that is probably 4.10. That God is the Savior of all mankind, especially of believers. So yes, there is a special salvation, and yes, you must have faith to have that special salvation because you are saved by grace through faith. 
It's actually through Jesus Christ's faith that we're saved, but we have to have some faith to believe in this completed work. But that very belief that we have is given to us by God. And yes, we're the first fruits, but the first fruits means that everybody else is coming behind us. But it, it's all based on God's work. See, God accomplishes it. And then everything that plays out in real time is a result of what God is doing. See, the person that comes to belief in 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 9 through 11, we are given this grace in Christ Jesus before times aeonian. So God has chosen who would believe and who would have this grace before, long before we were even born. So God makes a choice and then in real time, everything plays out exactly according to the choice that God has made. So we make choices based on our circumstances and who God created us to be that fall right in line with what he planned for us to do in order to reach that end result of us being in Christ Jesus and choosing him. And if you're not in Christ Jesus and you don't have this grace and faith, then you can't, if God didn't choose you, then you can't come to this acceptance and belief in this lifetime. But you will eventually. So everything that happens on this earth is part of God's plan, part of his doing that gets you individually and every person individually to that end result where God is all in all. It's not about God letting human beings go off on their own, not at any point to perform for him independent of him in order to get to him because that would make God reactionary and that would be religion. Anytime man is performing for God to get to God, that is God being attended by human hands. That is God being subject to religion of man that man has to perform in order to get to him. But what ends religion is God doing it all. God planning everything, telling the end from the beginning and then doing everything that leads to belief, doing everything that leads to unbelief, doing everything in every creature that eventually leads them to coming home to God. Ultimately, that salvation by God is done through Christ Jesus, through his death for sin, his entombment, and his resurrection. And that action, and all of God's actions, saves humanity apart from the must-do of humanity. And therefore, the truth of God and the truth of Christ Jesus ends every single religion ever created.